I've been single my entire life. I really don't mind it. It's just how I've always been. And yet, I still buy Valentine's candy and a card every year. That simple thing saves my life. I moved to a small town right before starting high school. It was difficult trying to make new friends and adjusting to an entirely new place at the same time. By the time February rolled around, I was finally feeling as if I'd gotten the groove of things. I had only made a handful of friends, and to my shock, the first time I was ever asked out on a date was a week before Valentine's Day. I felt awkward going out with a girl who I'd never spoken with before, so I turned her down. She got angry, claiming she had other options and she was just being nice. That might be the case, but her extreme reaction confused me. When I was able to, I asked my friend Travis about it. Oh, yeah, you die if you're single on Valentine's Day. Get your heart ripped out and everything, so find a girlfriend for the day, he said, and I scoffed at the idea. Come on, you don't expect me to believe that, do you? I asked, thinking he was just pulling a joke on the new kid. He acted as if he was just giving me some facts. He was looking at me as if I was crazy for not knowing about getting a date or dying. I told him he was crazy, but he just shook his head. It happens every year. Someone gets their heart ripped out. It might not be in this town, but, like, it's nearby. It's always someone single. I guess you can risk it, but why? It's just one day, he said, trying to defend his point. This was before everyone had a cell phone in their pocket, so I couldn't look up deaths of people missing their hearts right then. I made a note to research it later, so I could call him out on his urban legend. I crossed my arms, still not buying what he was selling. That's stupid. Are you saying... What? Someone knows you're single and kills you? My breast. A person doesn't do it. Some sort of monster does. No one has lived after seeing it, but people said they heard drums and then found someone without their heart. Travis was again looking at me, as if I should know all of this. A Valentine's Day monster. Really? Well, Christmas has Santa, and there is an Easter bunny, so why can't Valentine's Day have something? For the next ten minutes, I roasted his idea and belief in the Valentine's Day monster. At least he could take it all as a joke, even if he did believe the murders were real. He wasn't positive a monster was doing it, but couldn't offer up any other reason behind the deaths. And he wasn't risking it. He already had a date lined up with a girl he didn't even like. I still thought the entire idea was dumb. The rest of the school did not share my outlook. As the days slowly got closer and closer to the fated day, the students got paired up with each other, some done out of safety, others using the monster as an excuse to finally ask out their crush. I received a few pity offers, but I refused all of them, as an act of rebellion against this stupid small town's tradition. I just watched as everyone started dating in fear of death. The stores sold out of candy and cards pretty quick. Normally, everywhere would be flooded with red and pink products. The shelves were barren a few days before the 14th. Now, I refused to accept any offers, and I didn't plan on asking someone out either. The school offered a program where you could buy sweetheart candies to be delivered to a class for a small fee. I didn't mind getting my new friends one each, or while making up silly names to put on the card of who they would receive it from. It was the only thing related to the whole day I gave in to, aside from buying a box of chocolates for myself. The chocolates were just a normal box of assorted types from the grocery store I'd gotten with some money made from doing chores. When I brought them, the cashier slapped a heart-shaped sticker on the box without my permission a small one for someone to write who the box was meant for. With how crazy this town was over the holiday, 
I didn't blame her. By that time, I'd been so overexposed to anything Valentine related. Just seeing the sticker put me off eating the chocolates. I shoved them in my backpack to forget about them until after the 14th was over. I really wish I had taken the entire thing a bit more seriously. It wasn't until the night before Valentine's Day that I finally looked up the murders, finding them to be true. Dread started to form in my stomach as I scrolled through the library computer after school while waiting for my father to pick me up. I didn't find all the mysterious deaths, but enough to make me worried. Three people were found with their hearts missing. The police said that from the state of their bodies, they were killed on Valentine's Day, even though their bodies weren't found right away. An entire town was warning me about this, and yet I still sat in shock after finding out it was true. My father finally got me from school, but told me I needed to walk home the next day. I sat in the car, silently debating on what to do. He just chalked up my distressed state as normal teenage behaviour. I didn't sleep that night. I tried thinking of names of students that might not have a date, all while knowing it was useless. When the clock turned midnight, and it was officially the 14th, I nearly had a panic attack, convinced the monster would swoop in to take my heart. The only way I got through that night, without a mental breakdown, was to shift my train of thought back to what it was before looking up the murders. A Valentine's Day monster was stupid. It wasn't real. Some heartless store manager saw the murders and made up the story to sell more products through fear. That was it. It had to be it. I remained awake all night. In the morning, my mother noticed how I looked and offered to let me stay home. I refused, secretly hoping I could find a date if I went to school. The place was a buzz, with new couples and gift exchanges. As I walked down the hallway, a few students looked at me with pity in their eyes. Most knew my single stance, and how I could be the monster's top choice, if it was real. No one went near me that day, if they could help it. My few new friends awkwardly tried to find reasons to rush off if I tried talking to them. All of them, having temporary new girlfriends, gave them a good enough reason to be left out. My candy heart prank wasn't funny. Some thought it was, but I couldn't find the humour in anything that day. Instead, I spent it looking over my shoulder, expecting to hear drums at any second. The final bell rang, and Travis was brave enough to walk over to me for a chat. I think he thought this was going to be our last conversation. The idea got him motivated enough to walk over, but not to find the words. Do you, uh, want to come over? I'm going out today, but maybe we can hang out beforehand. There was a really good show, and... He trailed off, feeling awkward. It's fine. I'll just chill at home. My parents are going out and won't be home until after dinner, so I have the entire place to myself. That never happens. They finally think I'm old enough to be trusted to be left alone. I explained, determined to still not believe in this nonsense, even though I was terrified. Travis nodded, looking pale. He wasn't brave enough to press me on hanging out. After all, he was certain I was going to die that night. He did not want to be around to see it. I'll talk to you tomorrow, I said, and gave him a shaky wave. He gave one back and started to hurry over to his new girlfriend. When you're a teenager, everything is a big deal. As I walked away from school towards home, I felt like I was walking towards my own death. The sky was overcast. It made me feel even more gloomy. I kept mocking myself for my mood as I walked along the neighbourhoods that had become familiar to me over the past few months, 
Finding a small rock, I started to kick it as I walked, trying to take my mind off the fear in my chest. A car started to drive along behind me, with such loud music I could hear it thumping through the air. I watched it cruise by, a bit annoyed over the sound. If you're going to blast music, at least play something good, and not something that just thud it. And as the car kept going down the street, the music went with it. But a hint of the thudding remained. And I stopped, confused on why I could still hear the sound if the car was so far away. When it finally turned out of sight, I realized the car wasn't the source of all the noise. My heart started to beat so fast and hard, it matched the thudding rhythm that I could swear was getting closer and closer. I didn't look behind me, or even get angry at myself for getting scared. I just ran down the street. I should have run up to one of the houses, asking for help. I was so frightened, nothing rational came to mind. I ran like crazy, all while that beating followed. I wished this was a prank but didn't stop running to find out. My mind was unable to work as my lungs burned from the mad dash. For a moment, I thought I was losing whatever was chasing me. I stumbled, nearly falling over a crooked sidewalk square in front of my house. I couldn't tell how close the thumping sound was over my own heart. Sweat poured down my face and I felt faint. I slammed into my front door banging on it before I remembered my parents were out. I nearly screamed in frustration. The door was locked and my keys were buried under my books inside my backpack. That thudding sound was all I heard. It was so close it rumbled in my chest. My hands shook as I fumbled to get the zipper open. I was scared to death and couldn't keep my eyes open. Squeezing them shut, I felt around in my bag for my key. My hand brushed against it when a puff of wind came across my face. I smelled something sweet. And then the wind came again. To my horror, my mind clued into the fact it wasn't the wind, but something breathing on my face. It was too late. Even if I got my key... I couldn't unlock the door before whatever brought the heart-thumping sound took my heart too. I refused to open my eyes to see the monster. I now knew to be real. I love the sound of your heart. It's a shame it's alone. Let me add it to the others. The voice that spoke wasn't some prank. It was twisted and beyond anything a human could make. My mind was racing. I felt a sharp tip of a claw poke my chest, leaving a small cut through my shirt. A cruel laugh came as I whimpered in fear. With my hand still in my backpack, I felt something that was not my books or my house key. A crazy idea came to mind. It was either that or death. So, I grabbed a hold of the only thing I could think of. Yanking the box of chocolates from my bag, I held it out to the monster I still refused to see. My voice strained and shaking. I asked a question I prayed would save my life. Will you be my valentine this year? My heart nearly beat out of my chest. Opening my eyes a crack, I could see the box in my hand but not the creature that brought along countless heartbeats that mixed in with my own. I should have died. Instead of clawing out my heart, the twisted hand with razor-sharp nails reached out and took the box. I forced my eyes shut, my entire body shaking. Something brushed my face, causing me to tense up so much that it hurt. That clawed finger brushed some hair from my face with another cruel laugh. What a cute child you are. I'll accept this gift this year. But someday, I'll be back 
to claim your heart. I bit down on my tongue, trying not to scream at that horrible voice. With one final laugh that rattled my bones, the thudding stopped. It took me forever before I gathered up the courage to open my eyes. Nothing was on the front step. I was alone. If it wasn't for the rip in my shirt, I would have thought the whole thing came about due to stress and lack of sleep. I didn't tell anyone what happened. I mean, who would believe me? I went to school for the first half of the day on the 15th. I had barely slept for two days and needed to take the rest of the day off. But I didn't want my friends to think I died. All of them looked shocked I'd lived. I just said that I got lucky. The school moved on. The short-lived relationships caused by that day fizzed out. As time crept along, I started to dread knowing Valentine's Day was coming yet again. I brought more candy, roses, and a card, expecting a visit from the monster. I should have just gone along and dated someone. But somehow, the idea of it was more stressful than dealing with a monster. I anticipated and feared Valentine's Day, only to have nothing happen. Nothing happens besides the fact that the gifts I addressed to the creature go missing overnight. As the years carried on, I kept buying different gifts with the same result. As I've gotten older, I've heard those terrible heartbeats faintly on Valentine's Day. Each year the sound gets louder. I think this year is finally going to be when the monster shows itself. Again, just asking out someone may save my life. But I think if the monster does show up, I'll ask the question yet again. But this time, I will keep my eyes open. Hello, sinister listeners. If you've enjoyed this story, then you'll find all the author's information in the description below. For more content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to succumb to the sinister.